Yeah, Buzz YouTube, how's it going, everybody? How are y'all today? The team builder for week two of the APA uh, season three. Actually, is it season three? Currently, I don't know. It's a little bit late at night. Uh, me and Mighty Kiss should be playing tomorrow, and I just want to say, I think Mighty Kiss is actually a pretty awesome name. Definitely go check him out guys. A link to his YouTube and all the other coaches will be down in the description. So, of course, if you guys do enjoy the team builder, make sure to hit that thumbs up button down below. And please let me know in the comment section below what you think about our team and what you think about our matchup. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts and opinions on that. So, uh, we were able to win week one. Hopefully, we can win week two here and make a little bit of a winning streak for the Durham Drudagons. Now, this matchup is a little bit interesting. Like, I really don't think we have a bad matchup, but I really feel like this matchup is very 50-50 and... Unfortunately, Mighty Kiss did lose his week one match, so I know that he's going to be gunning and he's going to be trying his best to win his week two game. So I have to be prepared for anything and everything going into this battle. Of course, below me, as you can see, is going to be our team matchup. Now, of course, the top six Pokemon are the exact six Mons that I expect them to bring. So, Kartana is absolutely terrifying, whether it be Swords Dance, uh, three attacks, maybe like Sub SD potentially, or if it's the Timid Set, it's going to be a very, very scary Mon. Uh, along with Salamence, Salamence and Kartana are his two Z move Mons. And even though, yes, we do have Ice Shard on, down, on Dawn Fan, sorry, I do fully expect them to want to bring Salamence regardless because Dragon Dance Salamence or just uh, Roost 3 Attack Salamence in general is very very scary in this matchup. Uh, Mega Alakazam outspeeds absolutely everything and anything that we want to bring that is not Choice Scarfed and it is able to outspeed our Mega Beedrill which could be a little bit detrimental to us. Mega Alakazam is actually a very scary offensive threat paired up with Kartana and Salamence. Then Alolan Muk, I definitely expect him to want to bring that because Alolan Muk can potentially switch into so many threats that we have, whether it be Hydreigon, uh, Primarina, Spec Swellow, and uh, potentially Jirachi. Then him on top, of course, we don't have a good fighting type uh, answer. So him on top, I definitely expect to come a more offensive variant as opposed to like a defensive scent. And then as for his sixth Pokemon, I really feel like it's kind of a toss up between Savali, Rotom, or Alola Ninetales. All three can definitely come. If he does want to bring Savali, I fully expect a rock type Savali or a steel type Savali to deal, to deal with a uh, Swallow potentially because Swallow actually has a really good matchup in this game so I definitely expect either steel type or rock type so volley so shouts out to the front office homies and to the bullet punch club homies so with that being said let's go ahead and jump into our first team member here of course we have good old choice Specs Swellow running a nice timid set here we are running enough speed to outspeed a lowland nine tails if I'm not mistaken Taken. Yeah, I personally feel like Pyroar, Golurk, and Lycanroc really do not have a good matchup in this game. And actually, if he doesn't bring Golurk or Lycanroc, then that means he doesn't have Stealth Rocks. And that's going to be very, very huge for us in this battle. So I'm really hoping that he doesn't bring either of those two. But if he does bring one of those two, then I would much rather see that over like Silvali or Salamence or Kartana potentially. I'm not really sure what he would want to replace for Golurk or Lycanroc. But if he doesn't bring them, then that's going to be that's going to be even better for us but we should be running enough speed to outspeed a uh, lola nine tails and outspeed it by at least one point uh boom burst is a clean clean to a ko on his entire draft unless he has assault vest muck which 
a salt vest muck uh if it's like max but death max hp worst case scenario all we have to do is get off about 30 or 40 ish percent on that and then uh even if it tries to switch in we should be able to comfortably two hit ko him now if i really wanted to go a modest swallow in this match then the issue with that is that i would speed tie with the kartana and i would speed tie with the aloha nine tail so by going with a tim in nature i guarantee that i'm able to outspeed them and still be able to just nuke them with a boom burst and honestly guys i really really think swell is going to be putting in the utmost of work in this game like besides mega alakazam we outspeed absolutely everything unless he brings like scarf salamence or scarf kartana there's nothing else that realistically can switch or deal with boom burst swallow so i have a lot of high hopes for this and i really do expect it to put in a lot of work if i'm not mistaken i believe heat wave does do a little bit more damage to the alolan nine tails but the main reason why i have heat wave is just on the off chance that he does have silvali steel but if he has silvali rock then i'm still gonna be hitting that for pretty good damage with specs boom burst so if it is rock i'm not too concerned if it is silvali steel i can catch that with a heat wave after potentially getting off a bit of boom burst damage u-turn is mainly there for momentum if i potentially uh, predict them to want to bring in an assault vest muck or just bring in the Salvali and then defog is just kind of nice for hazard control also defog helps us if he does want to bring the aurora veil with alolan nine cells which could in theory be a little bit scary to deal with but we'll see how things go so moving on to our next team member here we have my boy tauros aka 5150 rocking a nice choice scarf set and the great thing about tauros in this matchup is that it checks timid uh speed boost kartana because plus one speed kartana with sword dance in a theory, if I'm not prepared for it, could be absolutely terrifying. But with this EV spread and with the Choice Scarf, we easily handle that. So that's covered. We can also outspeed a plus one Dragon Dance Mega. Not Mega. Why do I always think it's Mega Salamence? We can outspeed plus one regular Salamence, which is really good. Ice Beam is a straight Oko after Stealth Rock's chip damage. Or if he's running a bit of bulk investment yeah he can live an ice beam but he should be low enough to the range where we should be able to revenge kill him with something else so ice beam is literally only for the salamence and flamethrower is literally only for the kartana to be able to revenge kill them pursuit is really nice in this matchup because i can potentially trap the golurk and i can trap the mega alakazam mega alakazam is actually really scary in this game paired up with kartana and uh salamence because if my Tangrowth, uh, if I bring Tangrowth and it's Assault Vested and it's worn down, Mega Alakazam can come in and take uh, potentially a free KO. But with Pursuits, I believe on the Switch, we do about 80 to like almost a little over 100%. So if we're able to get off Stealth Rock's chip damage on the Switch, we should be able to knock out Mega Alakazam, which is really good. The 76 uh, special attack EVs are mainly just for the Salamence. If he's running a non-bulky Invested or a non-Yachi Berry Salamence, we knock him out with the Ice Beam after Stealth Rocks. So that's going to be really, really good. And then Body Slam is very spammable against his entire team if he does not bring the Golurk. Which again, I really don't think Golurk has a good matchup. Like, I would love to see a Golurk over like Silvali or Muck or something. So... Yeah, I really don't expect Golurk to come to this game. Uh, next off, we have Bon Clay, the Primarina here, our second Choice Scarf Pokemon. And now, the great thing about this matchup is that realistically, I honestly, honestly think that dual Scarfers in Tauros and Primarina have an absolutely amazing 
amazing matchup. We are running enough speed to guarantee outspeed non-Scarf Cartana by one point, and hopefully we can use that to our advantage. I believe Moonblast alone does like 69 to almost 78-ish percent with Moonblast, which is kind of insane, honestly. So if we're able to get off like three turns like two or three turns of stealth rock damage on cartano or stealth rock damage and a little bit of chip it's guaranteed in range of our scarf primarina which is really really good scald if you look at his team scald is literally just spammable against everything that he has yeah he does have a rotom wash but even if he brings it if i'm able to burn it that's going to uh, make it easier for the rest of my offensive mons to potentially be able to beat it 1v1 and unless Rotom Wash is very spadef bulky or assault vested Choice Spec Swallow is easily able to 2 KO it so that's going to be really good we'll be able to nullify leftovers on some Pokemon and maybe spread some burns Ice Beam is only for the Salamence and Cartana because if it comes down to a neutral move and those are his two last mons, Ice Beam still does very respectable damage. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Ice Beam might have a chance to knock out Cartana. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it definitely does do a lot of damage. And then the hidden power we are running is hidden power fire. If uh, we bring this in against Cartana and maybe he doesn't expect us to be choice scarfed, then we can just clean knock him out with the HP fire. But I think most of the time in this matchup, we're just going to be spamming Moonblast because if he doesn't bring the Pyroar and he doesn't bring Silvali Steel, he does not have a good switch in to max special attack Moonblast coming from our Primarina. So I'm really hoping that Primarina can maybe catch the Salamence or catch the Cartana off guard. Now we don't outspeed Alakazam, but we do have a really good amount of natural Spadef bulk to chew at least one Psychic and then that way we can potentially revenge kill Alakazam or weaken it for the rest of our team so all right so a little technical difficulties there but our next team member here is going to be jose the jirachi rocking a nice spadef uh bulky set and this is our first of two main answers to the mega alakazam also this functions as a pseudo check to the him on top while primarina can easily switch in to two adamant close combats from the him on top this can also function potentially as a pseudo check to that actually worst case scenario is that he brings like adamant max attack choice bandit him on top which i think is very very unlikely but he could definitely be like adamant max attack with life orb if he wants to go down that route but i don't think there is a way that he should be able to do it yo jirachi unless he is choice banded if worse comes to worse so wish is really nice because we can pass off wishes to our primarina and our final two team members iron head is extremely good because we can potentially flinch down the alolan muck which in my opinion alolan muck is the most bulky Pokemon that we have to beat down and potentially beat 1v1. I do kind of want to switch Iron Head for U-turn, but I feel like Iron Head may have a little bit more usage to it. Like U-turn is really good because if we switch directly into Mega Alakazam, which should be 100% timid and not modest, then we live two Shadow Balls on the switch in, and we could go for U-turn and get off a huge hit or U-turn as he switches out, but Iron Head, I think has a little bit more benefit to it because it is a 60% chance to flinch. So that's gonna be potentially an extra turn that we have to get off damage on something that my opponent wants to bring. And then Icy Wind is extremely good because we're able to permanently prevent the Salamence from speed boosting and prevent the Cartana from potentially speed boosting as well we can also lower the speed of pyroar alakazam 
and the Alolan Ninetales. So that's going to be extremely good. And then, of course, Stealth Rocks or Stealth Rocks. They are the most important move in the game. And if I'm able to get up Rocks in this match, that little bit of chip damage is going to be very, very handy. But for the most part, Jirachi is just kind of here as a backup check to the Mega Alakazam. And if he doesn't bring Mega Alakazam for some reason, then we can use it as a pivot switch in and an offensive mon to be able to pressure the Cortana and pressure the Salamence and stop them from gaining too many boosts in their speed. I assume it also really helps if I know that he does have Scarf Cortana, I can go for the Icy Wind, get rid of that plus one speed. Or if I'm able to live two hits, put him at minus two speed and then go from there so maybe that'll be a scenario that comes up but moving on down the line we have the must the tangrowth this is our second answer to mega alakazam and even if mega alakazam has signal beam there is first off no reason absolutely zero reason for him to run modest Alakazam because we have Mega Beedrill so I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that he's gonna want to bring a timid max speed variant of Mega Alakazam and if he is a timid variant of Mega Alakazam there is absolutely no way he's gonna be able to 2AKO our Tangrowth from full HP so that's gonna be really good because if I lose my Jirachi and I don't have anything else. Tangrowth can consistently prove to be a switch into Mega Alakazam. Brick Break is there in case he does bring the Aurora Veil. So we have Defog. Actually, hold on. Do we have Defog on? Yeah, so we have Defog on our Swallow. We have Brick Break on our Tangrowth here. And we even have another way of getting rid of Veil on our last Pokemon. But so far, we have two answers. Hopefully, two answers to Aurora Veil. Hidden Power Ice, if I'm not mistaken, to be able to potentially knock out the Salamence if he feels like he can get up a free... Oh no, we have Hidden Power Fire, sorry. We have Hidden Power Fire to be able to straight Oko the Kartana if it feels like he can set up against us. Rock Tomb actually helps us against Salamence because if he thinks he can get off a free Dragon Dance with Salamence, we can consistently spam Rock Tomb to keep Salamence at neutral speed. So even if he gets up to plus six attack, he's gonna be at neutral speed because of Rock Tomb. So that's really good. Rock Tomb also helps us against the Kartana potentially, the Pyroar even, and the uh, Mega Alakazam as well. So that can definitely come into play. And then knockoff is very spammable against his entire team. I was debating on whether or not I wanted power whip or knockoff, but I believe ultimately knockoff is my better move to have because we still do well over 50% to Alakazam. And then by going for knockoff, we get rid of any potential items that he might have on his team. So moving on to the final team member here, we have Mama the Rotom Heat rocking a nice physically defensive set. This is our second backup answer to Kartana potentially because if he does want to be able to break to through Tangrowth, sorry, then he needs to be either Bugginium Z or Corkscrew Crash both of which are dealt by my Rotom Heat. Now, at this point, you guys have seen the first five Mons, and we have really no safe switch into Alolan Muck. Like, Alolan Muck is an absolute nightmare to be able to switch into in this match, and at least by having Rocky Helmet along with Discharge, we can get off the Rocky Helmet damage. We can wear him down with Discharge, and potentially get a full para. And Pain Split is really nice because if his defensive mons are at a much higher HP than our Rotom, then we will be able to gain back HP from them. But Rocky Helmet is mainly here for the Alola Muck. It also really helps against the Him on top if he does bring a more offensive variant of him on top and if he does bring a more offensive variant of him on top i really don't expect it to be running something like max speed adamant or max speed jolly because him on top does like to have that extra little bit of bulk and even technician him on top in general just kind of 
seems to be really good on paper so we have discharge to be able to punish that also discharge is really handy to be able to spread paralysis against his entire team like paralyzing salamence alakazam pyroar nine tails uh Salvali or kartana is going to be very very huge for us because then they have that 25 percent chance to get fully paralyzed and that gives us essentially a free turn the hidden power that we are running is hidden power ice because i really didn't feel like we needed hidden power fire or overheat in this matchup with the special attack evs that we do have after stealth rocks if he is running a purely offensive salamence we should be able to knock him out with hidden power ice so that could possibly very well come in handy also hp ice hits the Golurk if he does for some reason want to bring that and discharge and hp ice do the exact same amount of damage to kartana which we can to a ko after stealth rock so that's gonna be very very handy as well and that is going to be our squad for this week of the APA. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about our matchup and what y'all think about our team. And I will see you all tomorrow with the actual battle itself. Definitely go check out our opponent, Mydicus. And with that being said, I will see you all later. So, later, everybody. No matter where you're at, I'm not here to make friends, it's time to attack And deplete your HP with a final smash Don't make me turn around and pull a six foot hacks <laughs> Six foot, six foot hacks, hacks yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks, hacks yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks, hacks